Yeah, because Derek Chisora is now homeless, sorry to everybody. He lost his house to Joseph Parker, so we're lucky. Um, I'm Derek. I have got a house next to my house in Morecambe. You are welcome at any, any time, my brother. But the moral to the story is, never bet your house on something unless you're one million percent sure. And you can never be sure in every division. So now he's homeless. Good luck to him. Questions? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, one thing that has happened with me, um, when I brought Sugar in for the last couple of fights, he took me back to being a rank novice. He made me feel like a piece of shit in ass without swearing or anything. He made me feel terrible as a boxer. Like, he took the lineal heavyweight champion, heavyweight champion of the world, undefeated. And he, he, he's the only man who can ever make me feel like a bum, like I've never had a fight in my life. But it takes a special mentality to go back to brass, to brass tacks and back, back to brass roots and start again. And we put a lot of time into it, didn't we, over the last few years. What people don't know about, all the camps we've had, without fighting, we've been in camp, we've been in Miami, we've been in Vegas, we've been in Dallas, we've been everywhere. Training, training, training with his style. Um, and I think, it was a, I think it was an absolute fantastic camp because... We had it in Morecambe Bay, where I'm from, with the good Lancashire, fresh air and sea air. Um, everyone thought that it might not have been a good idea to have it at home, but Andy Lee said to me, you trained well at home, a couple of, last year it was. So we went at home and was very happy. And we practiced and practiced and practiced, and long range punching, using the jab off the shoulder. And I think everyone will agree with me in here tonight. The shot that Dunn kept catching him was a check up. Check -up. Well, it, um, I kept clipping him with that check hook and we practiced it on the pads, wouldn't we? Bang, 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 bang. And then the one thing that amazed me was I clipped the body snatcher with the left hook, yeah, yeah <laughs> to the body and I went, you heard body snatch, don't you? And he went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny. <coughs> Thank you. The answer to your question of I'm rambling on is, am I getting better? Hell yeah, I'm getting better. I think you're all right. Thank <laughs> you. Ten of them shots go too early because he like like straight one two bang bang. He's catching one his gloves, yeah. And I'm shooting it high. I can hear Andy Lee say, "Shoot it low, shoot it low, yeah." But I didn't want to bring it up too early because he was pre he was preparing to block the straight. And I started touching him there, touching him to the body with the with the uppercut to the body, and then I slipped aside and bang, beautiful peach. And it was the time for I think it was what was it round five round six. I was softening him up with the jab. I didn't want to get involved in a, in a brawl. Trading punch just like I did against Wilder. I want to keep me distance, use me range. And I, thought I, boxed, I thought I was boxing really well. I thought I was using the jab, smashing him up with the jab. He tried to make it rough, fair play to him. He was trying to manhandle me in there, but, you know, have you ever tried wrestling with a dinosaur at all? I'm like a T-Rex in there. I'm six foot nine, 270 pounds. It's difficult, especially when you're a shorter um, and you're not as quick as well in... He tried hitting me with the elbows, head. He tried knocking me, double blocking me, and clips to on me. Um, he was trying everything. He was using the forearms, trying to elbow me. But, and then when you try and cheat in a fight, you always come up second best because he went to knock me and he got caught, which was his own fault. But like I've always said, boxing is not ballet dancing, it's a contact sports fight. So I ain't complaining. Dylan done his thing. And for the man that's been avoided for the best part of two or three years, He's been mandatory for it forever. Um, he deserves his credit. You know, he got his shot. He made millions of dollars thanks to me. And um, I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy with my performance. And I hope he's happy with his performance because he didn't fight a world champion tonight. I ain't no world champion. I'm a legend in this game. And um, there ain't, you can't deny it. I'm the best heavyweight ever been. Yeah. There ain't never been one who could beat me. Because you know why? I ain't just doing that. Six foot nine frame, 270 pound weight, can move like a middleweight, can hit like a thunderstorm, and can take a punch like anybody else.
If you couldn't fight, you'd be hard to beat. You'd be hard to beat. Yeah, and I've got balls like King Kong, a heart of a lion, the mindset of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I just can't, I just, it is what it is, but you know, it was a very special night. Um, and what, what a way to top it all off, Frank. Right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know, it was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I wasn't 22 months out of the ring. I didn't have a little daughter die four weeks before my last fight. I brought her back to life again. I'm sleeping in the hospital bed for four or five weeks before I fought Wilder yeah. 3. People don't know all this. I don't complain. I don't make excuses. And he asked me, are you at your best for a while? And I said, yeah, I am. Because it wasn't Deontay's fault. It was my fault. And I had to deal with my own stuff. But we had injury-free camp. Um, and I trained for 14 weeks for this camp. Um, so, yeah, it was good. It felt good. I felt fresh and I felt, I felt sharp. And the performance told it all tonight. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you this one for free. Before I fought Deontay Wilder at three, I was in my house in Vegas and I said to Paris, I said, this is going to be the last fight, baby. I, I just don't want to do it anymore. And she said, yes, I'm happy. Let it be the last fight. And then after the fight, I said to her in the shower, I said, it's definitely the last fight. There's no more of this. And then I was happy with that decision. And I get a call from Frank saying, you know, we can do a homecoming fight at Wembley and I was like oh. I said to Paris I said I can't go one more time I've got to get the old boots out again and, and you know it was a tough decision because I was happy being in Morecambe retired I used to go to the gym to watch Joe Parker train and the boys Tommy I used to say to Andy Andy I'm retired <laughs> remember Andy yeah. um, and then I come back for the big big fight at home and it's been amazing I couldn't have topped it off it's been a fairy tale a few years absolutely um, more than I ever dreamed of uh, as a kid and as an adult so big thank you to everybody who's helped me in my career promoters trainers managers um, all the journalists all the TV companies ESPN plus ESPN BT Sport box office BT Sport everybody because everybody played a big part in, in the, the making of the Gypsy King I wasn't I wasn't uh, wasn't just made easy it took a long time so it, uh, was, I'm very happy with my career, I've won it. By the way, I do take a lot of pride in this, and I know pride's not the best thing to be, but I'm very proud of I've won two English titles, two British titles, two Commonwealth titles, the Irish title, the European title, WBO Intercontinental, WBO International, WBO Super, WBA Super, IPF, IBO, Ring Magazine, Lineal, WBC, WBC Mayan, WBC Global, I won every belt there is to win. Yeah. There is a belt to win. I won every belt in the game. If this was a computer game, it would definitely be completed. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Get some of that Floyd there with the money. Um, you know, I'm all about fun. You know, I'm an entertainer. You saw tonight, I entertain. It's what I do best. I'm an entertainer. Um, so I want to have a lot of fun. 
No big Francis Nagano was here today. He's on my hit list in an exhibition fight. However, he wants in a cage, in a boxing ring, boxing gloves, UFC gloves. We can make it happen. I think everyone wants to see he's a monster of a guy. I'm a monster of a guy, so it'll be a clash of titans for sure. the icing on the cake, you know, and the ring, the ring walk um, music and thing was was planned, it was something that I wanted to do, um, very, it means a lot to me that song, uh, the Big Small song, because it was just a dream, it was all a dream, um, and it all come to reality, so it was, um, it was unbelievable, it was just an amazing night, ring walk was very special to me, um, I got lost in ring walk actually, I started running and screaming and jumping, I was on fire tonight, I really enjoyed myself and um, it was phenomenal, you know, the fans were amazing. Everybody, the whole thing, the whole show was amazing. I could, if you could have planned the perfect show, perfect ring walk, perfect entrance, perfect fight, I couldn't have planned that any better. Look at me. I don't, I've not looked in the mirror, but I don't feel like the mark on me. I never took any damaging blows. I've got out of the ring in one piece, like I said to God in the beginning, back when I was there. I said, let both men get out of the ring in one piece. Billy ends up, hopefully he goes home to his family in one piece, and he does. And we can both both go home and enjoy our uh, spoils of war. That's what it's about. And that lady there asked three times, so I'm going to come to you next. <laughs> Fire away. Hi, Jim. Congratulations. Thank you. I heard you say that the hatchet went on the ring, and you're getting paid to, for doing something you absolutely love, and yeah. you will do it for free anyway. Yes. So, first of all, how does it feel to be in this position? What are the qualities that allow you to be above all other human beings that try to defeat you on the ring? And also, are you really sure you're ready to give up the adrenaline, the lifestyle, and the ring to retire right it, now? It was absolutely fantastic, you know. I feel at home in that ring. I feel like a, a dolphin in the, in the water in that ring. Um, it's what I do best. It's what I was born to do, you know. People are born and they never find a calling card. Some people do, some people don't, but I really do believe that I was always meant to be a new champion of the world. There's nothing else I was ever going to be. From being a little boy, I was always destined to be a heavyweight champion. I, uh, there was nobody that didn't believe it. My family all believed. So it was um, it's been a very special career to me. Very special. fighting there. Um, you might see me at SummerSlam coming up soon. I've got to speak to Vince and the boys. Maybe, maybe make this happen. I know that Drew McIntyre has been saying a lot of things about me. Just a knocking man. <laughs> I can do his pal. Um, you know, I'd love to be at Cardiff. I'd love to be back at, back in the centre stage in the UK, um, especially for the wrestling. I enjoyed it last time in Saudi Arabia. It was, it was fantastic. So, to come here and do it would be phenomenal. Um, and I'm going to we're definitely going to make a bit of contact and, and see you make that sort of stamp in reality. Uh, what did you think when um, Dean White came out for the first time? I didn't think much of it, to be fair. Um, it, did it confuse me? No. Because I did it straight back to him in round two. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> it was like he came out south ball, I come out south ball. It was different. I, I know Dylan was never going to stick to a southpaw for the whole fight because he, he doesn't do that. <coughs> it, it was good, you know. Dylan was a, a tough man. He took a lot of punches, good punches to the body and head, good jab breaking him up. Um, strong man, big, tough, strong man. But the range, my range is, is, is very special, and I can keep him at that range. And if they walk into me, he started to. Andy Lee was saying in the corner, he's gonna, he's gonna chuck it all away. He's gonna come straight at you. Because he, he's gonna, he's gonna get impatient. And Trouble's going right. He's gonna shove his head in there, I'm by the way. 
wants to break this mother beep 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 up. He said, unload on him. He said, eat him to the body with that right hand and eat him to the top of it. Let him have it, pump your shot. Send it straight down the middle he was going. And I, and I think it was round five, around five, I ate him to the body, bang, with a left hook and I hurt him. And then I put one downstairs to the right. It was good, you know, we had a good game plan. The game plan, I don't know, because you think it worked to what we were saying on the garden yesterday morning, Shay? Yeah, 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 so. And when he started walking forward like that, push it straight down the middle and then right up, bang, you know. You actually told me at the end of the round, at the end of the fifth round, that's what, it was this round, the sixth round, you're going to get him out.
So yeah, it's been it's been fantastic, and you know, like I say, I've enjoyed my career. It's been a fantastic career, and at 34 at the minute, every good dog has its day, and I know Frank will be on un- un- unhappy about that. I'm top and top rank, but you know, there's, there's a lot of money to be earned. But for me, you know, I come from fuck all. I come from nothing. You know, it's never been about money. I'm not a money person. I drive around in 07 um, Passat on 56 plate diesel. I don't care. I don't care what I've got. It's never been about money to me. I know a lot of people with money, big money, but none of them are happy. Not one of them. And I know money can't make happiness. It's not even been about belts for me. It's not been about legacies. It's not been about anything apart from punching a motherfucker's face right in on the night. <laughs> That's all it's ever been about. Excuse the language. All I ever want to do is win. The money aside, money's beautiful, great. It's great to be paid for what you do. And if you're good at something, Ben Davidson told me, if you enjoy something and you're good at it, you'll get paid for it. So I enjoy boxing, I was good at it, and I've been paid for it, but it's not the be all and end all of anything. I can end up in a council flat at any time, don't worry about that. Um, so it is what it is. And will it change me as a person? No. Do I need a mansion and a Rolls Royce? I don't. I got them, but I don't need them. But it doesn't, it doesn't make of you as a man. You, a man is what you are in here. And if you're a good person in here, and you've got fuck all, you'll do for me. And if you're a millionaire and you're horrible, I don't want to know you. Because I've only got time for good people. and a cuddle and a hug, thanked him, um, and I told him, I said, you'll be a world champion, Dylan, um, but tonight you just have to be great in the game, and that was it, um, he, he come and give it his best, no, listen, there's no embarrassment losing to a better man on the night, at least you've got the guts to go in there and have a fight, people will say, oh, Dylan White was shit, or say this, and I've seen them, people who've never had a fight in their life, they call, they call professional boxers rubbish, and I'm like, please get a glove on and have a fight yourself, and then tell me if you shit or not. So big shout out to Dylan and his team. You know, here, everyone thought it was going to kick off, didn't you, Frank? Yeah. And here, when we first come up face to face, thought it'd be a kick off, but we behave like gentlemen um, all the way through, me and him. Um, we, diffused, we diffused it all, the animosity, shook hands. I thought the weighing was one of the best weighings I've ever seen. Never mind getting each other by the throat. We was dancing to the music, it was great. It was fantastic. Never, I've never seen it done before. Have you shook? Sure? Not at all. It was like a telephone or something. It was, a cel- uh, it was more like a celebration. Yeah, and um, what's I saying we do? What do we turn restaurants into? Private nightclubs. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's the same restaurants. Yeah. Congrats, congrats for your victory. Thank you. 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 It was cool. Yeah, I think it was a good fight when it happened last year. Um, and whoever wins, wins. Good luck to the both guys. I, I hope that they both train well and have good preparation and they give the fans the best fight possible. And to be honest, the honest answer to that is Clark Gable would say, I just don't give a damn. Quite frankly, I just don't give a damn who wins. It's none of my business. And the one thing that I've always prided myself on is never getting involved in anybody else's business. He looks like Usek. Are you Usek's brother? <laughs> <laughs> he just look like him, doesn't he? Frank, there's a big challenge for you to get back to change your mind or are you just letting right off into the sunset? I'm not even going to go there. He's the guy who gets in the ring. He's the guy who takes the punches. If he doesn't feel that he wants to fight, what am I going to try and coerce him or force him to do it then? Because that's how fighters get hurt. Exactly. He needs to be, he's fighting, he needs to be up there, right, in his own mind, in his own free will to do it. And that's how it is. He's had, he's been phenomenal. I've he's done, I've done everything asked of me. I've, I've done more promotion, more interviews than anybody. I go above and beyond to promote these shows that I fight on. So, I definitely deserve to be able to make a choice where I think that it benefits me the most. I give 20 years to boxing, amateur and professional. 
I've had my brains knocked out. I've been, I've been put down. I've been dropped. I've been cut. I've had tough fights. I've had draws. I've had wins. I've boxed all over the world. And you know, how much blood can you get out of a stone? I give everything to you guys. Put it on the line every single time. Um, and enough is enough. That's it. Let's wrap up now. Eh? If it was about money, I'd continue. But it ain't about money, so I'm happy. Well, all, all I know is this would have been Bob's amazing night, you know, he's 90, came into the business in 66. Yeah. And I know he's sitting there, and I know you talked to him. I spoke to him on the I talked to him in the ring. And I know he wouldn't want, he would want to be here more than anything. Yeah. It was, like we talked about the press conference, yeah. historical for me, yeah. historical for him, and I know historical for all of us, but he was, uh, it was really his body of work to watch what he did tonight. You know what, when, when I, uh, I had a meeting with Bob um, in 2019, I said to Bob, I said, what's the motivation, Bob? Why, at, at nearly 90 years old, why do you want to be involved with the British heavyweight? He's going, well, he said, I came into this game promoting the best heavyweight in the world. And he said, I'm going out of it promoting the best heavyweight in the world as well. I said, fair play to you. <laughs> so, yeah, big shout out to everybody. Um, thank you very much and good night. God bless.